How can Fox save the Fantastic Four? The answer is simple. Everybody. Lucius here again. Uh, I just want to make a quick video uh, talking about the Fantastic Four. Now, um, I know they made a, a new movie. I haven't been able to see it, but I saw like some stuff on on uh, on the internet, like the trailers and people talking about it and stuff. And a lot of people were saying that it like did really badly and. Um, I think probably because I like the Fantastic Four. I've been a fan of the comics and I had like uh, the cartoon show from different like the 60s and 90s and stuff. And I even like the uh, the Je Jessica Alba movies were fun, too. Um, but this other one was like really it looked really dark. And I was like, well, it's weird because this is. The Fantastic Four are superheroes that are like the Incredibles. The Incredibles were kind of based on the Fantastic Four, so they should should be like fun and science fiction-y and stuff, and like fun. Um, but it seems like they tried to make it like the Dark Knight, like a cross between the Dark Knight and like Twilight or something. I don't know what they were doing. But um, so anyway, it's a big mess, and everyone is asking like, what should Fox do? Um, with the Fantastic Four, even Fox, who owns the rights to the Marvel characters, uh, is asking what they should do. And I know that they were originally trying to figure out a way to, because Fox owns the rights to Marvel's X-Men and Fantastic Four. And like Marvel Studios owns like Iron Man, Hulk, and Thor, and Captain America. And uh, Sony has Spider-Man, which they're sharing with Marvel now and all that stuff. But anyway, Fox only has the rights to um, Fantastic Four and X-Men. So they were hoping to cross them over. And so that's like a big thing now because with this flop of the reboot Fantastic Four, they're just kind of like they don't know what they're going to do. And a lot of people are saying just for Fox to give the rights back to Marvel. And I think that's kind of a missed opportunity, actually, because everybody is just not – they're not thinking – about what Fox could really do with it. So my answer to that is how can Fox save the Fantastic Four? The answer is simple. Mutants. You make the Fantastic Four mutants. And you have them set from the beginning in the world of the X-Men. The world that Fox has made with the X-Men, that shared universe. You put them already in there as mutants. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be upset about that. Like, you know, they have their uh, powers from like a, a space accident and everything. But I think it lends itself more to, uh, it makes a lot of more, it makes more sense to start it that way. And I think that's something that people, once they see a, a real movie set, a Fantastic Four movie set in the X-Men universe, they'll get, they'll warm up to it right away. So, my idea for like a reboot would be to start from scratch and not do um, not do something for young, young adult audiences because I think that's kind of silly. It's like when they did the Star Wars prequels and George Lucas said, I need to do a character, uh, Jar Jar Banks for kids because kids need a character. But like I was a kid when Star Wars came out and all those characters were, I just liked Chewbacca and the, and the droids and and everything. I liked all the characters. There was nothing that felt like it was just for a kid, you know. Um, but anyway, that's why I would say the story should feel like somewhat like um, the old uh, uh, Fantastic Voyage movie. You are listening to the sound of a completely new screen experience. A startling new kind of excitement. As 20th Century Fox plunges you into the most incredible adventure that man could ever achieve. Um, and I like the idea of, of the main characters being um, Reed Richards, of course, 
uh, who is a uh, uh, an astrophysicist and an engineer. Um, and then you have uh, Susan Storm, who is a, a theoretical uh, a physicist. No, a, a, a theoretical physicist, right? Uh, uh, deals with uh, like the string theory, relative relativity, and stuff like that. You know, like with wormholes and things like that. And then you have uh, someone to like, uh, like a uh, like an astronaut or something like that. Like uh, who Ben Grimm would be like a, the commander of a ship that they would take into space, and then you would have another part of the team would be uh, Doctor Victor Lever. Now wait a minute, who's Doctor Victor Lever? Victor Lever would be my answer to Doctor Doom. It's the same character, but instead of calling him Victor Von Doom, which is kind of silly. Let's be honest, because like if when you call him Doctor Doom, you don't call him Doctor Von Doom, so it's kind of it's kind of silly. You could when he's bad, he turns into a bad guy. You could call him Doctor Doom anyway. It'd be just like a nickname for him anyway. But anyway, the idea would be with Doctor Lavier would be um, his family owns like a lot of property and like land in uh, Romania, and um, through the course of the movie. He goes into exile and, and forms his own country um, based around who his family, what his family owns. So it would be like Latveria would come from his family name. So it'd be like uh, like if me, Lucius, for my own country, I would call it Lucveria or something like that. But anyway, so you have the Fantastic Four go into space. Now they're, they're – um, I like the idea of Max Landis did uh, – um, a, a script, Fantastic Four script, where he said that the name of the ship they take into space should be the Fantastic, and I think that is fantastic. <laughs> um, I think that that's a great idea. Now, the 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 they would go into space, and their I, the idea of them going into space would be to use uh, uh, the engineering technology to get into the negative space and kind of ride, ride the negative space like a wormhole to go into like distant galaxies to you could like slingshot and the, the 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 idea would be to find an, uh, a habitable planet to kind of deal with like problems of overpopulation on earth or or wars or um eco problems or uh you know just something to give uh, uh, Earthlings someplace else to colonize, basically. So, um, and together these these four are using their ideas to uh, to to go and explore the universe. So that's how the kind of movie would open. It's the four of them um, working on that technology in space, ready to use the wormhole to fly through to find another planet and stuff. So. Um, and by using the negative space, the wormhole they would ride into, um, it slingshot into another part of the universe, a galaxy, whatever. That would be called the negative zone, uh, which is kind of a nod to um, the comics, of course. So um, as they're in space, the movie would open with them in space, and um, you would see the characters talking, and you would have Victor talking to Reed, and through the through the course of the discussion of why they're doing this mission, um, you learn from uh, that Victor actually hates mutants because maybe a mutant I think like killed his mother or something or like an evil mutant like uh, um, did something to his family or whatever. So there's some personal tragedy that uh, is caused by a mutant, so he hates mutants. So it's not like Magneto who. Um, hates humans uh, and it's not like everyone else who hates mutants because they're afraid of them he just doesn't like them for personal reasons so he's kind of prejudiced against them and he either wants to find another planet that he can that earthlings can go and leave mutants behind or we can take the mutants too and leave them there on this new planet or whatever so you learn about his hatred and bigotry and um, as they're experimenting with the negative zone um, they, they slingshot to another part of the galaxy, and then um, as they're as they're coming back, there's a there's an issue with the ship, and the ship um, 
you find out that Reed is a mutant, and Victor discovers Reed is a mutant because Reed is using his mutant ability to uh, bend the physics around him to like stretch and and bend and and you know defy gravity and and air pressure and and all that stuff, um, change the physics of his body, um, and so it makes Victor flip out. Victor completely loses his mind, and then he sets the, the ship slingshotting out of control back into our galaxy and towards Earth. And so um, Sue, who has the ability to, the mutant ability to uh, bend light and control light, meaning she can bend light away from her to make herself appear invisible, uh, which seems kind of funny, someone could appear invisible, can't appear at all if it's invisible. But anyway, if she can control light to make light beams, laser beams, whatever, and uh, Ben, who's the commander of the ship and everything, has the mutant ability to turn his skin to stone. Um, and he, I would make I wouldn't make him a monster. I would make it more like the Hulk because it's more fun when you have like an actor playing Ben Grimm, and instead of turning him into the thing, and he he stays the thing for the whole movie. There, I mean, yeah, it's tragic if he can't turn back, but it's more fun for the audience if he, if you're just, like, you know, waiting for him to turn into the thing, you know? So that would be fun. So um, Ben and Sue and Reed uh, work together to stop Victor from um, hitting, throwing their ship, the Fantastic, into the Earth, causing a huge devastation, a huge explosion. They stop it, and they're kind of outed as mutants to the world. Um, and so there, um, the name, I like the, also going back to uh, Max Landis's thing about when they're going on the Fantastic, the four of them are, are the phrases coined, they're the Fantastic Four because of what they're doing, their experiment and stuff. So they come back to Earth. When they crash on Earth, you know, the, the Fantastic Three, I guess you could say, save the ship, save the planet, and uh, you, their, their heroics are witnessed. Uh, around the world. Um, Victor is hurt. He's injured. His face is disfigured and stuff. And so he re he flees back to Romania. And that's when he forms his own nation. Because he wants to isolate himself. And I, I, I picture, like on the ship, Victor is also like an engineer. You know, he's a scientist, of course. And... Um, I see that they have created, I think they have created like robots to help them on the ship and stuff. And maybe Herbie is there too. Herbie's on the ship. But anyway, um, Victor uses that technology to build his own army or what in the comics they know as the Doombots, which are like robot soldiers and stuff. So anyway, so the back on Earth, Victor's gone insane. He's become basically Dr. Doom. He's, he's built like an Iron Man suit for himself. To house him in, kind of like Darth Vader. It's a suit he needs to survive because he's disfigured. And Darth Vader was George Lucas based Darth Vader on on Doctor Doom, so I think that would be that that's the way to go. That was Doctor Doom was first. Um, and I know what some people are saying. Oh no, this is going to be the Fantastic Four against Doctor Doom again. Uh, but a reboot shouldn't just be, hey, um, we're going to reboot this so. We can't use this character or villain because we've used it before. It's like when they did the Amazing Spider-Man, they did that reboot, and they couldn't use Green Goblin right away because people were like, oh, we've seen the Green Goblin. But you've seen Spider-Man too. So it's like the purpose of the reboot isn't to do something like just to show a new character. It's to show an old character done correctly. So I think if you do Doctor Doom and the fan, do Doctor Doom fan, uh, uh, correctly, then there's a little. It's what people will want. They want to see it done right. They don't want to see some other crazy character. They want to see a Doctor Doom done right. So anyway, um, once they're on Earth, Doctor Doom does his thing, or Doctor Laver uh, forms Laveria, becomes Doctor Doom. It was probably like coined in the paper and stuff. And I picture this fantastic scene <laughs> uh, with uh, uh, Reed Richards and Sue Storm talking with Pre Professor X. So you would have like a cameo by Professor X. They would be discussing how they have their mutant powers and everything.
So now, uh, Victor's gone insane again, and uh, still. And so Vi uh, Reed kind of lead, kind of decides that he's going to go and talk to him and kind of like mend uh, fences and stop him. And maybe Doctor Doom is planning some crazy. He probably is planning some crazy thing to annihilate mutants and or whatever. He's gone mad. So you have um, Reed and Sue and Ben are going to talk to him because maybe you have like peacekeepers that have come to, to like take over, like to, to, to tell him he can't have Laveria or whatever. And he's used his doom bots and his scientific magic magic. He's like, I see he has like magic in the comics, but I see his magic is like kind of faux magic. It's magic that he's scientifically simulated. I guess you could say. So it's, it seems like magic, but it's all science-based to seem like it's magic. Like, if you do a card trick, it's not real magic. It's a science kind of a thing. Anyway, so everyone's wondering, where is, where is the human torch? Well, that's Sue's brother. And he kind of stows away on their trip to Latveria. And, um, and so Johnny Storm, his power, he wouldn't catch fire. But like the others, he would have the ability to set the air around him on fire, if that makes any sense. So it's like you would have the person and his clothing and everything encased in an aura of fire that he can control, manipulate. So um, anyway, so you get to the big final battle and you have the Fantastic Four because now Johnny Storm has taken the place of Dr. Doom and the Fantastic Four. They have a big battle with the Doom bots and everything and they capture Dr. Doom and whatever. So, um, which I think could be fantastic. I keep saying that, but it's true. It could be really fantastic. And then you, um, you set yourself up to, um, by having their, their ex ex space exploration at the beginning of the movie, once they go slingshot through the negative zone across the galaxy, I see that as being set up for a sequel where maybe like Galactus detects them in his part of the universe and decides to send the Silver Surfer in the second one to come find them so he can take over Earth. Like maybe Galactus hasn't gotten to Earth yet, doesn't know about Earth, but then he, because of what, the, maybe Dr. Latver, Dr. Doom messing around, kind of he does something where it tips Galactus off and... Galactus, like he makes a clap in in the universe, and Galactus notices it, and then he's coming back. But that's in the second part. So you know, you have the big battle, whatever, and um, they do their thing and stuff. Uh, but so that's kind of the story, roughly. You know, been juggling around with it. But the thing is, if you're gonna do a reboot, you need like this is like the third time Fox would be trying a Fantastic Four movie. So you need star power. And uh, I would say, even though it seems a little old, I would go older. With I would go older. Don't be afraid. You don't need fantastic kids. I think that um, you would you would need someone who would be who would bring like a gravitas to the movie and like like make get your attention. You know. So I, as Reed Richards, as the engineer and astrophysicist, I would say George Clooney. George Clooney would make a fantastic, I keep doing that, I'm sorry. He would make a fantastic Reed Richards. So he needs someone kind of his uh, equivalent as Sue Storm. And I can't think of anybody better than Charlize Theron. And I'm not even sure I'm saying that right. Charlize Theron. But you know who I'm talking about. Because um, she can do action. She can do amazing drama. She's an amazing actress. She looks the part. So then you need someone to play Johnny Storm. Looks like he could play his brother, her brother. Um, and I know this seems kind of weird, but this uh, young actor has gotten a lot of uh, kudos for his acting ability lately. And he's really stretched. Now that, that like Mr. Fantastic is stretched, but you know what I mean? He's like his acting chops. But as Johnny Storm would be, I would say Zac Efron would make a great Johnny Storm. And then there's... Uh, uh, the Thing, or uh, Ben Grimm. Um, and uh, I think uh, a perfect Ben Grimm would be uh, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg is uh, from from New England, so he has like, he could do like a Brooklyn accent. I know that doesn't make much sense, but 
he could do like the, he could be the tough guy, and you could see him being like uh, a commander, captain of a spaceship, you know, because he was in Planet of the Apes, and uh, he would be so good as Ben Grimm that you could you would be compelled to watch him even if he wasn't the thing, you know. And then as Doctor Doom, um, I can't think of anyone better than Javier Bardem, uh, and I think even. I, I just see him as like a great, uh, well, he makes a great villain, but he would also be a very formidable villain. He would be like, even before he becomes Dr. Doom, he would be scary. He would command respect. You would believe that these people, Sue Storm, uh, Ben Grimm, uh, Reed Richards, and uh, Javi, and uh, I always call it his actor's name, uh, uh, Victor Latvere, would they would be con they would be contemporaries perhaps you know you could see them all working on this project together and I could see um, them kind of I could see him like commanding that he has that intensity and I could see him going toe to toe with with uh, George Clooney so anyway those are my thoughts I think that Fox doesn't need to give up the rights they just need to, to make the next Fantastic Four movie a complete part of the already established X-Men universe. Make them mutants. Anyway, that's my thought anyway. Uh, I don't know. But what do I know? I just, you know, it's just what I was thinking. But anyway, anyway, I gotta go. Um, I'll talk to you later. Uh... Oh, oh, bye!